And hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. And tonight is quite possibly the last Marvel movie of the year, but don't quote me on that. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Or the Wasp and Ant-Man, if you prefer it that way around. Quite so. Well, it's certainly a comedy. Do you think? Yeah, I definitely think. If it wasn't a comedy, they wouldn't have included that whole embarrassing sequence where Ant-Man's size coils had given out and he ended up half size and had to wear the oversized thing. Oh, that, yeah, the jumper thing at the store. Yeah. I don't know, I would describe it more as an action comedy rather than a straight comedy. Yeah, action comedy. But still. And it gave me a lot of tension, you know. Very sort of tensiony. Really? Why? A lot of people in that movie that I really, really wanted to punch. Really? Yeah, like uh, Birch, the tech stealing guy. Yeah. I would have, uh, I would have given him, like, I would have punched him a lot, like a lot. I kind of feel bad for that actor. He's kind of annoying in like everything I've seen him in. But I yeah. Can't remember his name. It's sad. He really needs to be in something where he's somebody who, like, doesn't need to be punched a lot. I think he's kind of like Joe Pesci in that way. Joe Pesci ends up in a lot of roles where he needs to be punched a lot. Then again, Joe Pesci does end up in a lot of roles where he's kind of a freaking psycho. Yeah. But we won't go into that. I suppose Michelle Pfeiffer was okay in it, but I don't know. I kind of would have seen if I could have got Catherine Zeta-Jones into it. To play the original Wasp. I guess that's kind of a bit cheesy, kind of being married to Michael Douglas. Are they still married? Yeah, I think so. Mm, I'll have to check that out. I'm pretty sure they are. I just I saw um, something about her, their daughter. She's 15 and she was saying how she didn't used to know they were famous actors or something and she thought her dad made pancakes for a living or something. Well, that's a thing. Yeah. And that uh, Jimmy Woo, the character of Jimmy Woo, if you ask me, deserves so much better. I mean, let's not forget here that Jimmy Woo, like the actual comic book Jimmy Woo, Mm -hmm. I mean, the first time I was acquainted with him was actually in the sadly departed MMORPG, premium MMORPG, Marvel Heroes. And yeah, it was premium, but you know, Marvel, and characters, and uh, a whole bunch of fun stuff. So it was okay, and it had such a community. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to get to it first now. The music was uh, emotionally leading again. I mean, did you hear that swell as uh, Hank and Janet embraced? Uh Uh-huh. Hello, every romantic film ever. Well, that's, that's like what film music is supposed to be for, really. Yeah, but uh, there's capturing the moment and there's being on the nose. Uh, well, I kind of prefer it in films to be in news reports and documentaries, but that's like a, a different matter. Yeah, it's a much different matter. But yeah. I like the music in general, I have mm. to say. I fun and exciting, so I think it goes well with the fun and exciting nature of the film. Yeah. And there were too many villains. Do you think? Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, not counting the FBI as a thorn in Ant-Man's side, there were two villains. It's always a bad sign when a movie gets, like, two villains. One wasn't really a villain. So, I mean, it kind of went down the normal Marvel route of them telling a story and throwing villains in there as well. You think a lot of Marvel movies do that? Yeah, I mean, you, you don't think, like, say, Iron Man staying at the end, turning into, like, Iron Monger after being, like, a sinister villain, but not even being a villain that much, just, you know, because it was just the story of 
how he gets captured and how he escapes and then what he does after he escapes. Yeah, well, there's that. But, you know, an antagonist is central in something like Captain America First Avenger. Yeah. You know, you really couldn't tell that story without the Red Skull. Well, I suppose you could have had generic um, Nazis that he fought or something, but... Yeah, but with the red, but you need to take it into the stratosphere, and for that you need the red skull. Yeah, and um, well, I mean the one wasn't really a villain like Birch; it was just more of a an annoyance, an irritant. I think they just put them in, so he gave it almost a, a farcical air, that, like in the in the terms of a old-fashioned farce of different things cropping up. Different elements happening, so that you had a lot of elements going on at once. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I find some of the problem with the Ant-Man films, it's not really a problem because I really enjoy them, but they tend to, like, oldify all the characters, because they've just gone in and made it straight about Scott Lang. So, like, you've got old Hank Pym and old original boss. And now you've got old Bill Foster, so he's never going to be like a giant man or Goliath or whatever. Well, you know, them's is the breaks. Yeah. And on one on one hand, it's good because you know you'll never have to deal with the infamous slap from the comics. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, for those of you who aren't uh, acquainted with the comics, one time while Hank Pym was insane, insane. In the height of his stress, he struck out at Janet. I mean, it is terrible, and and it is regrettable, but it was one slap once. He was crazy, he wasn't in his right mind, and these are probably all excuses that uh, defenders of Johnny Depp would give us. But we won't go into that, we definitely won't go into that. Well, comic book... Um Hank Pym is currently merged with Ultron and he's kind of causing problems in the galaxy or something. And then recently they had something about Hank Pym's soul living in Soul World, which is inside the Infinity Soul Gem, getting eaten by some monster. Oh boy. Do you actually know what's going on with comic book Scott Lang right about now? No. Actually, he might be in a comic called... Yeah, that must be him who's in... There's a comic called Ant-Man and the Wasp featuring an Ant-Man and Nadia Pym, who is Hank Pym's long-lost daughter from a previous marriage. I'm pretty sure she appeared in Lego Marvel too. I seem to remember really? Nadia Pym as one of the uh, Wasp characters. What did you think of the gender-swapped um, ghost? Oh, it was a gender-swapped ghost. Yeah, apparently he's supposed to be a bloke in the comics, but I don't well, know Well, he was that some, a man in uh, Marvel Heroes when he appeared. Yeah? Yeah, he delivered one of the uh, MacGuffins to Doctor Doom, who is sadly missed as a antagonist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, I think, like, Ghost's just kind of like a B-list or C-list villain, so it's probably fine to just gender swap him. Eh, I suppose... And she was alright, that actress. In the end, she didn't really turn out to be much of a villain. She just wanted to be whole again. Yeah. But you can't do that by hurting and killing people. Nah. Which is obvious. Yeah. Well, I have to say, overall, I enjoyed the film. We didn't really bring anything new to it. And, I don't know, I'm kind of thinking with Marvel films at the moment, that they've all reached a level of functionalness where they're all entertaining and the special effects are, are all good and the costumes are all good and the acting all seems to be good and the music's good. But you want to see something that you haven't seen before. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, I've been feeling that way ever since Doctor Strange. I mean, Doctor Strange was a start. But I really wanted to go much further. Uh I wanted to go beyond. I wanted to go into some kind of realm fully psychedelic. Well, the whole 
when he's first exposed to the the whole magical universe, as it were, it was kind of a bit out there. Like when you got them hands growing out of the hands and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. A little bit out there. Nothing I haven't seen late night on Channel 4, though. Yeah. Yes, well. ki- yes, folks, I was one of those kids. But we won't go into that either. We have, we've been not going into a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh, well. But, yeah, it's nice to see Hope Van Dyne get her wasp duds and be the wasp and fight the bad guys. Yeah. But, spoiler alert, they didn't survive Thanos' magic snap. Yeah, I think I was disappointed by the final scene, which was just like an ant playing a guitar. Uh, no, it's a drum kit. Yeah. It's just a giant ant playing a drum kit. See, that's another thing with these films, though, is the internal consistency of their logic, of the shrinking and growing and things. Like, because I'm sure they've said that when they shrink down, they've got like the same weight and power as they have when they're full size. Which is, and I mean, you saw it a little bit in the first film with the tank, and it's kind of yeah. like, well, if these things are like the same weight and the same power and whatever, how are they carrying a building around? And how have they got that thing full of cars, which would weigh like the same as like all those cars? Yeah, exactly. Inconsistencies. Plus, they keep having giant ants. And the the thing that limits the size of insects is that insects don't have lungs. They have sporacles or something for drawing oxygen in. So if you were like the size that those ants were, you need to have lungs. This is fridge logic. Thinking about these kinds of things. Well, I mean, that kind of... I mean, with the, with the ants, you could probably... Because that's too science you could put that off a little bit. But it's like, when they said, oh, when someone shrinks down, they're the same weight and power and whatever, and then people are, like, carrying things around, like they've got a tank on their key ring and they're hoisting a miniature building around. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's round about that time to give some final thoughts and put it on the ladder. Yeah. Entertainingly functional, and it's good to see a story that isn't like, you know, part of the whole Avengers thing, but ties in, but nothing new. And I mean, I'd like to say there was anything exceptional, but there was also nothing I could really fault. Yeah. Solid middle of the road movie, but far too many punchable antagonists, and the whole thing just made me feel tense. So, let's go and put it on the ladder. Okay. Um, I forgot what films there were. We've got Incredibles 2, yeah. Deadpool 2, yeah. Infinity War. Yeah. Did we see Black, Black Panther, Panther, yes. Black Panther this year, yeah. Black Panther and this year, wasn't it? And there it is, Ant-Man and the Wasp. And Ant-Man and the Wasp. There weren't any others, were there? Not as I can remember to. Okay. I'm going to go... Incredibles 2, Deadpool 2, Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Black Panther. And I'll rate this film somewhere like 6 or a 7. Okay. I'd be a little crueler. I'd go for a 5. But, as the ladder goes, I'm going to go Incredibles 2, Deadpool 2, Black Panther, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Infinity War at the bottom, because it was only half a movie. Right. So, yep, this has been Funky Monkey and his nameless producer. As ever, all the e-begging links and other stuff are in the description. Thank you for listening. Check out the Minds page. It's actually uploaded the first season of your original review show. And I've put up a couple of episodes of your History of Turrican, and there's at least one 
of these um, podcasts on there too. But it's going to keep growing. All right, that will be in the description too. Anyway, thank you for listening, and we'll see you at the movies. Bye.